Hey y'all, thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your FT-991A, this little puppy right here, uh, to get your best receive settings. I'm going to demonstrate these settings for the CW mode, and if you look down in the video description, you'll note that these settings are all outlined in there, and will include the menu functions, the function mlist uh, screen, uh, a few knobs, and uh, adjustments that you can make all along the way. Now, I could have made this a really quick video by just showing you how I set mine, but like I will say, your mileage may vary. So, uh, not only do I show you the settings across the board, I tell you why you set it that way, why I set it that way, and you are certainly free to go off and do your own thing and adjust. For example, I have my bandpass for a CW signal set at 100 hertz, 50 up and 50 down. Uh, you might want a wider or more narrow, and I'll show you how to set all that up for yourself. Uh, please take a moment and give me a like. <laughs> please like me. By popping that thumbs up icon and please consider subscribing to this channel. John doesn't subscribe to Cast. So you can see all of my content in one convenient place and be notified when I post something new. By the way, if you stick around till the end of the video, stick around. I'm going to make an announcement that should make FT-991A fans, or should that be fanatics, very happy. Now, let's go take a look at the CW Mode Receive Menu Settings. Before we get to looking at our menu settings, uh, please note that I do not have my keyer plugged in. And the reason for this is, uh, this is a receive instruction. So I don't need to have it in there, and it just um, mucked up the picture. There will be no foolish wand waving or silly incantations in this class. To get to your menu settings, press the menu key and they'll come up. And we're going to look at the low cut and high cut settings. Uh, you want to set these so you have a little bit of space around your offset frequency. Uh, which is the pitch setting in your function menu. My pitch is set to 750 hertz. So I've set menu item 050 low cut frequency to 700 hertz and uh, my slope item 051 is how sharp the cut angle of the high cut filter is. So that's at 18 dB per octave, which is your highest uh, angle. On the high side, I have set my high cut frequencies to 800 and with the same uh, slope of 18 dB per octave. Uh, this gives me a 100 hertz bandwidth. Uh, you might want to set it wider or more narrow. Uh, play with these and uh, see what you like. Next, we're going to move up to item 114. Item 114 is the IF notch. Uh, this allows you to specify uh, or pick out an interfering signal and attenuate it so it isn't bothering your desired signal. The factory default for menu item 114 is wide, but I recommend setting it to narrow. Uh, the narrow setting makes it harder to focus the notch, but provides for better attenuation of the interference signal. You play with this setting and see which one's better for you. Item 115 and 116 is the scope display width. This has nothing to do with your received signal audio, but by selecting item 115 to waterfall and narrowing the scope span frequency, 
uh, menu item 116 to 50 hertz, which is the smallest selection when in the CW mode, you will have better visual clues as to the condition of your incoming signal. Now we're all the way up at the top of the menu listing uh, with items 001, 002, and 003. And they are respectively the AGC fast, mid, and slow delays. Now I recommend leaving these in the factory default settings of 300, 700, and 3000 milliseconds. Now we'll discuss more about how AGC works in the function setting. Menu, function. We'll get out of the menu by pressing the red back button right there, which will take us to the waterfall. Then press the FM list button momentarily, which will take you to the function screen. Now that you're on the function screen, use the forward and back keys to get to the AGC function, and that'll show up right here. The AGC function. Automatic Gain Control, or AGC, is a circuit that senses the received signal strength and then limits the gain of the RF and IF stages to keep the output audio volume at a more or less constant level. AGC also protects the RF, IF, and DSP stages from overload as it limits the signal strength that is allowed to flow irrespective of that signal level. Pressing the AGC button will cycle through auto, fast, mid, slow, and by pressing and holding the AGC, it will turn it off. These are the settings that we set in menu settings 001, 002, and 003. Uh, it is recommended that you keep the AGC in the auto mode. So we'll do that. And uh, this is another one that you can play with. In auto mode, your radio will look and see what mode you're in and set it for the appropriate one. And in CW, the appropriate selection by the manufacturer is fast. Feel free to experiment by setting to the other AGC speeds, adjusting menus one, two, and three, or even turning the AGC off. Uh, it will all depend on your preferences and uh, the conditions that you find yourself in. The IPO, which is right below it, right here, is the intercept point optimization and that allows the operator to optimize the characteristics of the receiver's front end uh, contingent on the current noise level and strength of the incoming signal. What this means is that it will, uh, by going to different settings, uh, increase or decrease the incoming signal. However, it will also increase or decrease the background noise. So you need to find the best setting for your current circumstances. Now on other models of rigs, the IPO is known as your preamp. The IPO cycles between three settings. IPO, IPO or AMP 1 and AMP 2. In the IPO setting, your signal bypasses the RF preamplifier, which gives you a direct feed to your first mixer. In the AMP1 setting, the signal is amplified using a low distortion RF preamplifier with a gain of approximately 10 dB. And in AMP2, your incoming signal is amplified using a two-stage low distortion RF preamplifier, giving you a total gain of about 20 dB. 
Now for more information on DB or decibels, take a look at this video right here. The IF noise blanker right here, uh, ND, significantly reduces noise caused by automotive ignition systems or nearby noise pulses, such as with an electric fence or the invisible fences used by some people to keep their dogs in the yard. Uh, now, I like leaving that off simply because if there are uh, noise pulses, and we can kind of define CW as a series of noise pulses, right? Uh, it will knock off your CW level significantly. Uh, so leave that off. And there's another one that comes in and does this exact same thing. Uh, but we'll discuss that when we get to it. Narrow wide right here cycles between 2400 hertz and 150 hertz. Uh, this is the uh, one touch IF filter selection and it's mode specific and uh, selection of a narrow uh, filter uh, and therefore it doesn't require any bandwidth control settings like what we did up there in 50 through 53 uh, in the menus. Uh, it just automatically gives it to you so I keep that as narrow as possible, which in this uh, in this state is uh, 150. Uh, ATT is your attenuator. If you have a desired signal that is very very strong, and it might be overdriving your receive side, you can punch that uh, attenuator, and it'll cause the signal. Uh, to be reduced by about 12 dB. Now, press your forward button one time. That's going to bring us to another set of things to talk about. Uh, the IF notch filter allows you to cut out an interfering si signal or carrier from inside the receiver passband. Once you've selected the notch filter by turning it from off to a displayed frequency, you can then adjust that using your multi knob to place your notch over the interfering signal. If you recall, when we were reviewing menu selections, we selected menu item 114 IF notch to narrow. This is because we're on the CW mode. With other mode, item 114 set to wide would probably be more appropriate. DNR uses 15 different algorithms and we select select it and you'll use your multi knob and let me turn my noise my sound up here and see if you can see any distinction so you see Really not much of a distinction, uh, but it uses 15 different algorithms to analyze and suppress different noise profiles encountered on the HF and 50 megahertz band. Uh, press the DNR button to turn it from off to a number, then use your multi knob, as I just showed you, to select one of the 15 different algorithms, which best improves your signal. You'll need to spend some time and play with this to find out which algorithm works best for you. Now DNF or digital notch filter is kind of like the noise blanker we had before and it will null out a number of interfering beat notes inside the receiver passband. Uh, because this is an auto notch filter there are no adjustments available. So it's going to look across your entire passband and neutralize anything out including your CW signal. So I recommend on CW we leave that shut down. Shift and width can work together and it is very effective uh, when they do. Uh, you can address them separately as well so we'll start with describing shift. Uh, we'll select shift. We'll see it turns to shift here. 
Now, by changing my mode or my shift number, and you can see it's jumping in 10 hertz steps, so you can shift your band paths up and down. You can also go to width and adjust the width of your band path, as you see. Now, we'll press the forward button twice, and this will bring you to one last function item that I want to discuss with you. It's the ZIN, or zero in. Uh, uh, that will set your offset frequency so that you're receiving and transmitting in the same spot. Basically, it zero beats your uh, it zero beats your signal. So let me turn this off momentarily. Come here and find uh, active. CW signal. Oh, there's there's a, a slow guy operating. So we're going to go back to our memory and then we're going to press our ZIN. So you can hear how it set the offset again. I'm going to press it again. Okay, so I am now zero beat. That tone you're hearing coming out of my speaker is at 750 hertz. <laughs> And now for something completely different. Now let's look at a couple of hard adjustments you can make to improve your receive signal. We get out of the function list by momentarily pressing the FM list button. And then we'll start with the RF gain adjustment knob. Now with the RF gain turned all the way clockwise, uh, we'll Turn up our volume and slowly turn it down and you'll hear and you can actually see it on the screen on the waterfall as well uh, that the background noise has reduced. and we have a nice clear or clearer signal. Now, uh, if you were to adjust this all the way counterclockwise, basically you turn off your receive side. So we'll take it back down here. Listen to the background noise. and you can hear the background noise fade away. Next is the clarifier. On other rigs, the clarifier is your RIT, or Receive Incremental Tuning, or XIT, or Transmit Incremental Tuning. Now we're gonna focus on the Receive. Press the clarifier button, which is right here, and watch right underneath the word CLAR. You want to get RX in green popping up there. We're going to slowly turn uh, the clarifier knob, which is up on top, and you'll see that I'm actually adjusting that receive signal up and down. This is useful if someone's trying to answer your CQ or uh, drifts in frequency during your conversation. Uh, now they're a little off your frequency. Turning your clarifier knob will change your receive frequency up or down in 5 hertz steps. It will not change your transmit frequency and this will allow you to better hear the calling station. Now finally 
I want to take a quick look at the difference between the CW lower sideband and CW upper sideband settings. Again, on most non Yesu rigs, these are called CW and CW reverse. Which one you're using doesn't matter. And you and the other station don't need to be on the same mode. Uh, I do plan on putting out a video regarding these two CW modes, but for now, let me demonstrate. I'm going to turn my sound up. I'm going to go back here, press my Zin button, make sure I'm zero, but zero beat. Get out of there. And I'm going to go into the mode. Right now I'm in CW upper sideband. And I'm going to change it to CW lower sideband. Now I'm in CW lower sideband and you should note the tone coming in did not change. Wrap it up! I hope you walk away from this video with a much better understanding on the receive side of your FT991A and a much better sound coming out. If anyone else has a suggestion, please leave a comment and share it with everyone. And I'm looking for suggestions on things that you've come up with that I didn't necessarily cover in this video. Uh, by the way, this video was the result of a comment made by a viewer oh, a month or two ago and uh, I jotted it down and finally got around to recording it. Uh, but it shows that I do watch and act on your uh, comments. Remember, likes are free and easy. So please give this video a like. Please like me, please. By popping that thumbs up icon. And please share this with your friends in the 991A community. Sharing is fun. And now for my announcement. Due to a computer problem beyond my control, it took uh, people from HP to actually go into my computer and figure out what was wrong. It's been fixed. It wasn't a problem with the FT991A. Uh, but I was unable to use my uh, little rig for just about anything, at least for the last few months. And since it's been fixed, I found out I really, really like this radio. Uh, in the meanwhile, I was loading up video ideas. So, over the next few months, you can expect about a dozen, give or take, new FT-991A videos. To make sure you catch them as soon as they come out, please consider subscribing. I subscribe to Team Beat. To this channel. As always, I'm at your service. Thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner where we took a look and how to get your best receive on the CW mode. The next video will be how to get your best receive on SSB mode and should be out within the week. 7-3 for now, I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out.